forward. Wonderful. So we're talking about going from chronic pain to freedom. And this is something that I've had off and on most of my life. And I have some wonderful tips to inspire you. So I don't know if anybody here has arthritis or has had joint pain or knows of somebody who has, or even chronic pain. Very often what ends up happening is that when it goes on for a long time, we're told it is a fact of life, it's normal, that it comes with age or even that it's genetic. Sometimes we're even told, well, I'm sorry, but you'll have to live with this. There's nothing we can do for you. I'm sure some of you ladies have heard this for yourselves. But what if there was a way to understand and possibly even reverse these symptoms? What if our body was giving us signals that if we knew how to decode them and reverse engineer and go backwards, we could actually make a different shift and help our bodies heal? Wouldn't that be amazing? I really wish I had somebody share this information with me <laughs> when I was younger, because it would have saved me years of trial and error and a lot of pain. This is also why I'm so passionate about it, because it's so life affirming when you can wake up and you feel great in your body. How many of you ladies uh, right now, and those of you listening, have had to go on a health journey at some point in your life due to some type of health challenge that really impacted your day-to-day? -day? Yes. Yeah, quite a few of us. <laughs> I want to share with you one of the stories where this had started for me. So when I was younger, I grew up in a dojo. I trained in the martial arts every single day. I loved it. It gave me a sense of pride, of confidence, of competence. And even though I wasn't very good, I took this as a way to really help myself elevate and be the best that I could in something. I had what I thought at the time was a winner's attitude. And I was really proud of that actually, because I thought I'm so positive. I'm always pushing towards my goals. Yes, yes, but, and here's the big but, what was driving that was a perfectionist's mindset. And I had such a deep-seated need to feel safe, to feel worthy, to feel lovable. I never felt that I was good enough. And this is what actually pushed me, to drove me to that perfectionist state where I wanted to be the best, not for the ego satisfaction, to get on stage and say, I'm the best at this, but because it made me feel like I was worthy to be loved and kept safe. That was what it boiled down to. And looking back, I feel sad that I felt that way. And I think it's terrible that so many people feel this way. Have you ladies ever felt that way? Yes. Very normal. So things started to go from bad to worse fairly quickly. First, I noticed some stiffness, some discomfort. That set in very quickly, and it began to elevate into pain. It was so bad, I actually lost the use of my right hand. Now, for two years, I could not write. I couldn't pick up my toothbrush to brush my teeth. I couldn't comb my hair. I had to do everything with my left hand. I also had to learn to write with my left hand. That's how bad it was. I was told that this is due to family genetics. My grandparents had arthritis, my great grandparents had arthritis. And the advice was, I was given was to take medication to try to control it. Now, I don't know about you, but this really did not sound like a solution that I wanted to be using for the rest of my life. While medication can be a great reprieve when you need to get sleep, when you need relief from pain so you can actually relax a little bit great thank you it's amazing but to be on medication for the rest of your life this is a very hard pill to swallow literally <laughs> especially when you're 13 thinking however many years i have they want me to be on medication for the next two years i struggled because i didn't want to take the meds to 
somehow find a way to get relief. I remember pretending that I was fine or okay so many times, A, to convince myself to keep my mind focused on getting better, and B, to not let anybody else know how bad I felt. You know, I grew up in a family where complaining was not done. So this was not an uh-huh. option. <laughs> I see, Eva, you're laughing here. <laughs> Maybe this sounds familiar to you. <laughs> But yeah, it was difficult because my parents worked very hard and they had a lot of challenges. So I didn't feel that it was even okay to say, hey, I'm in a lot of pain. They knew what was going on and they did their best to help me. But at the end of the day, I had to live with my body and not them. Two years was how long this took. And what I noticed one day I had this thought, which was really surprising because it came out of nowhere. And the thought was so powerful that it completely reversed the arthritis to the point where when I went back and had tests done and the doctors did all the examinations, they couldn't believe it because it looked like I had never had arthritis to begin with. That is how complete the reversal and healing was. And this was the first time in my life that I made a direct connection between how I felt, what my mindset was, and how that looked in my body. So take a guess as to how long it took me to reverse the arthritis from the time that I had this epiphany. One minute. You're the closest that has ever guessed this. It was actually less than a day. So the epiphany, the understanding that I made was in the evening. And what I realized was, wait a minute, I am pushing myself so hard to perform, to be the star athlete, to be the top martial artist in the school, to be the best student, to bring home straight A's, to make my parents proud, to be the good citizen, be the good daughter. I am pushing so hard. I'm not sleeping very well. I'm not eating very well. I have constant inner tension in my mind and body. I have constant underlying anxiety. I am not sleeping more than four or five hours a night because I'm in school all day. I'm training all afternoon and then I'm studying until 1 a.m. It was crazy. And I thought, why am I doing this? I'm the one pushing myself. My parents don't expect this of me, I realized. Nobody in my community or group of friends expected or even cared about this, really. And I thought, if nobody is expecting this, who am I actually pushing myself this hard for? I realized in that moment, actually, it's not even for whom I'm doing this, it's why. Why am I doing this? is because I need to prove I'm worthy of love and safety. For me, that was what was underlying it. It was such a powerful revelation. I just had this aha moment and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm doing this. I'm the one who's creating this tension and this anxiety. It's in my head. And oftentimes you'll hear somebody say, oh, it's all in your mind. Yes, yes, that's very easy to say. (laughs) It's very difficult to shift though. (laughs) Sometimes you are aware of that and you know it, but then you say, okay, so how do I actually shift out of this and change this mindset and this pattern that has been holding me to this life that I'm living right now and what I'm living in my body doesn't feel good. This was my realization when I was 15. Started when I was 13, when I was 15 is when I had that. So it took me less than a day. That night I went to bed and the next morning when I woke up, my hand was completely pain-free, completely pain-free. I could move my fingers. I could grab a pen again. I could write for the first time in two years. I could brush my teeth. I had full use of my body again. It was like a miracle. It was like a miracle. Honestly, I was so amazed It was so unexpected. I didn't even know how to take this in. I didn't even have any emotional reaction in the first few hours because I was stunned. I was so stunned. 
And then I thought about what actually changed. Did I change my diet? Did I, what did I change? The only thing that changed was my understanding of where this was coming from. It was my mindset. That's what it was. So what are some of the factors that impact our health? <clears throat> the obvious ones, right? Nutrition, exercise, environment, having peace of mind, community and heartfelt connections with others, personal satisfaction, living your values, genetics. I want us to take a moment to discuss genetics. Many people have been told that genetics is the main factor determining their health, the expression of their health and any symptoms that they may experience. So we look at things such as what's on your mother's side, what's on your father's side, what health issues did your grandparents have and so on and so forth. But besides genetics, what else do we inherit from our family? It's mindset. We inherit our thinking patterns, our belief structures, our lack mentalities, a lot of the way we react to triggers, stress, money issues, the way we communicate in relationships, how we think about the world and how we think about ourselves. From the moment we're born <laughs> and probably from in utero, we're already taking in information as we're observing our parents, our grandparents, our caregivers, our immediate environment. All of that is going straight into the subconscious. We are observing it, we are living it, we are feeling it. So we feel what it's like to have somebody have a very strong aversion to certain items, phobias, or we feel when somebody's really nervous and anxious all the time, or if somebody has a lot of anger, a lot of rage, and we internalize that. Through subtle cues, we pick up the mindset patterns behind. What's interesting, there were several studies done in the last 10, 15 years, longer actually, about families who had biological children and also adopted children. What the studies were looking for is how big a role genetics played in the expression of disease. So for example, if there was a lot of heart disease in the family, they looked to see if the children also developed those factors going towards heart disease or arthritis or high blood pressure or uh, different markers of health and disease. What they found was really fascinating that the biological children and the adopted children had pretty much the same expression of imbalance or diseases, which meant that genetics was not the main factor. Genetics was not the main factor that impacted our health. And that leaves mindset. Yes, there are other factors such as toxic environments. For example, if you have radiation poisoning or you have a lot of chemical poisoning or you have an accident, that's one thing, but that's separate from this conversation. What you grow up with, your mindset, is really what impacts you. And the great news here is that this is something you can shift. You can change your mindset, which is beautiful to know. So what is the role of pain? Pain is actually our friend. Even when we absolutely don't want to see this friend, we don't want it in our lives, we don't want to invite them to dinner, but it's our friend because it lets us know that something needs our attention. It's the wake-up call that's letting us know, make a shift before things get worse. So some of the main reasons for pain include accidents, right? We fall, we break bones, we have physical traumas, improper movement, poor posture, repetitive strain injuries, or even not enough movement. So the wrong movement or not enough movement or too much of the same movement. Number three, toxins or poisons, such as mold, parasites, bacteria, etc. These cause inflammation, and inflammation most often will lead to pain if it's not checked. And the fourth one is imbalancing mindsets and mental stress. Not allowing yourself to feel or process emotions, creating severe internal tension with your thoughts, is some of the items. Some of the mindsets that can negatively impact our health include perfectionism, 
over responsibility, taking on too much, right? Suppressed emotions, fear of failure, low self-worth, lack of boundaries, and all or nothing thinking, so extremes, right? And catastrophizing, really imagining the worst possible situation and putting yourself into a state of stress. Which ones do you relate with? Fear of failure. Fear of failure, yeah, that's a big one. Hmm. Okay. So how do we actually shift our mindset? There are a lot of different tools and techniques, and many of them work really well. I found a combination of elements very helpful. One, something we've all heard, especially in the last couple of years, is to have this clear goal and a strong why. This is really, really key because if you're very clear in your mind as to your goal, you set the expectation to start focusing on that, which is very good. Two, learning to trust your intuition and having the courage to speak up. How many of us have had those times in our life where we knew something? We were so sure, but for some reason, we talked ourselves out of it. And later on, we said, yeah, I should have trusted my first instant, my guts. I knew it. <laughs> so often, right? So often, we don't have the courage to actually go with our intuitive instinct. Often our mind gets in the way and talks us out of something that we intuitively know is the right path for us. Number three is community support. Having a great network of amazing people who are there to support, to encourage, to rally with you, to who are genuinely interested in your success, in your well-being, going to positively push you to grow, it's amazing. This is such a key factor, having a great network of people around you, it's key. It was really one of the game changers for me as well. I now have an amazing team, amazing group of people that I work with. Eva, you are one of them. <laughs> and it's amazing because we, all of us, need our own team. All of us. We all need the support of different therapists, specialists, friends, colleagues at times in our life. So later in my 30s, I had another bout with arthritis. Again, I noticed the same pattern of stiffness in my joints of pain. And I immediately thought back to that time when I was a teenager, when I had the juvenile arthritis and I went through the list of things. Okay, is it wrong movement? Is it my mindset? Am I stressed about something? But I couldn't quite find anything that really felt like it was the answer. And it was very interesting because I had this intuition and here's the intuition that it could be some sort of toxic, some sort of toxin, but I didn't know where it was coming from. I had cleared out my home, my workspace, everything was organic. I had no chemicals that I was aware of around me. You know, I had the amalgam from my teeth removed not too long ago. There were a lot of things that I had done in my environment to clear up toxins, but something kept telling me, look inside, there's something inside creating a toxin. And all I could think about was, well, maybe mold or parasites. What else could it be? Or heavy metals. So I decided to do a bioresonance scan. At that time, I was still fairly new to it. And it's something that definitely was a good choice because it cleared up and really validated my intuition. What was causing the second bout of arthritis was the toxins from very specific parasites. I also had mold buildup and several vitamin and mineral deficiencies and a few other elements that came up. But the number one reason was a toxin that was released from a couple of different parasites. This time it was the joints of my left hand that was bothering me. And the scan didn't even show that there was a problem with the left hand at all. I realized it wasn't because there was a problem with the machine. It's because the machine looks for the root cause. What's actually causing the symptom? So if the symptom we're experiencing is also where the root cause is, then it'll show up. But since this is not where the root cause was, 
It was actually digestive parasites. The scan came up with digestion, 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 parasites in the digestion, mold, toxins in the digestion, bacteria in the digestion, toxic bacteria in the digestion due to parasites. So this is what kept coming up in the scan. And I thought, okay, so let's see. We did lots of clearing, we did lots of cleansing. And very soon, I remember it was exactly four scans, four energizing and detoxing scans later that the arthritis totally cleared up. And that was almost 10 years ago. I've never had joint pain since, completely clear. Every year I do one or two in-depth scans to clear out bugs because we need to, we're surrounded by them all the time. So resonance is a technology that uses gentle electromagnetic frequencies to scan your system for things like viruses, bacteria, mold, parasites. It looks at allergies, food intolerances, heavy metals, inflammation. It even looks at the auric field. It's really remarkable and very detailed. What I love about this technology and why I also decided to learn how to use it and now incorporate it into my health coaching practice is that it's super gentle. There's no side effect except sleepiness that allows you to sleep better later that night. It is non-toxic, it is non-invasive, and it is so gentle even children or the elderly can use this. It's beautiful and you can do it online. You don't even have to be there in person. It can be done online. On the right side here, you'll see a comparison of an MRI scan and the scan from the bioresonance machine. In the MRI, you'll notice a dark spot. That's a tumor here. In the bioresonance scan, you'll see the black squares denoting the same area of inflammation and trouble. It's remarkably detailed. I'd like to share a couple of case studies with you, showcasing the mindset patterns. I had a client who came in. He was a gentleman. He was also a martial artist and a visual artist. He was retired in his late 60s. And he said to me, Yvette, there's nothing wrong. I feel pretty good. I'm just curious to see if the scan will pick up anything. I thought this was really strange because normally people don't come in just to see what the scan will show them without an actual reason for being there. But I thought, okay, let's do the scan. What was revealed is that he was right. He had amazing health, very little came up. And I've never since nor before that ever found anybody who had such a clean scan. So this man really was embodying the, the calm mental attitude because his body did not have inflammation or strain or issues, except for one spot. On the right side of his head, he had the arteries inflamed. And it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't critical according to the scan. But what the scan said was that it had been ongoing for about 20 or more years, which was a very long time. I asked this gentleman, do you have headaches? He said, no. I said, do you ever have pressure in your head or eye troubles? He said, no, everything's good. And I told him, okay, well, I'd really like to make sure that when you leave here, that the inflammation is gone because even if you don't have any issues right now, let's just prevent anything from becoming an issue later. So it took three or four scans to get the inflammation down. And after the last scan, when I could see that there was no more inflammation in the arteries, I said, that's great. I'm happy with this. You don't need to come back unless you want to come and say hello and have a cup of tea, which is great. So he thanked me. He left. The next morning, I get a phone call. This gentleman was on the phone and he was in tears. You know, when you're talking to somebody and you could hear that they're trying to choke back their emotion and not cry full out. This was the call. Yeah. And 
he said to me, Yvette, I'm going to tell you the truth now. When I came to see you and I said there was nothing wrong, I lied. I'm sorry, but I lied. So for over 20 years, I've had a headache on the right side of my head, and nobody has been able to help me with that. I've been to see, I've seen every doctor in the country. I've even gone to the countries abroad to see if some specialist could help me. No one has helped me. Today, I wake up pain-free for the first time in two decades. Thank you. And at this point, we're both crying because I'm so happy for him because I know what it's like to be in chronic pain. And he's just thrilled he got his life back. I thought, wow, this is just so incredible. And it didn't even look like he had so many issues on his skin. It was just that one little thing. And sometimes all it takes is for somebody to find the one little thing that's blocking you. Another lady came in and she said she had a lot of low energy. She wanted to replenish and improve her immune system and get her energy back. Something came up on the scan, which I had never seen up until that point. It said that all the cilia had been burnt off due to radiation. I don't know if you're familiar with cilia, are those very tiny, small hair-like structures that line the nasal passages, the lungs, the uh, intestines, and they have a small movement like this. What it does is to help bring debris out of the body, upwards and downwards. So you blow out your nose, that's the cilia helping to bring stuff out, for example. I said to this lady, okay, I need you to help me understand this, if you can, because I've never seen this, so let's figure this out together. The technology is saying that one of the big reasons that you have so much sinuses, you're always having a cold and your immune system is down, the radiation poisoning, which has resulted in the cilia being burnt off. So you don't have cilia any, anywhere right now. The hair has been burnt off. She looked at me, her jaw open, and then she said, I can't believe it. I'm absolutely stunned that the machine picked this up. Last week was my last radiation treatment for cancer. This is a wig. I have no hair on my head, on my body, and even the hair in my nose and ears have completely fallen out. And this is, this is why I'm always having a drip because there's nothing holding anything in. I can't believe that picked it up. And it was amazing because we both learned from this because I, as I said, I'd never seen this before. And I, I had to ask her, in almost every case, the client knows exactly what I'm talking about. They're then explaining it to me, why the machine is picking that up. So let's talk a little bit about allergies. We're born without allergies. We develop allergies as we grow due to toxins or due to emotional stress. Due to toxins, it's a reaction. We're overwhelmed. Our body is having trouble clearing out, cleansing, and rebalancing. And when you have a lot of gunk in your system, you also have trouble absorbing nutrients, vitamins, and all the good food and, and um, supplements you're taking is just going right out for the most part because you're not able to actually absorb them if you have too much gunk in your system. So this is why clearing and cleansing is going to be important to help with that. The other reason for allergies is emotional stress. Our minds are so amazing. They're incredible. I mean, we convince ourselves of things all the time, don't we? That's on the logical thinking aware side, but what's happening in the subconscious? I wanna share a story with you. Many years ago, I used to practice acupuncture and Chinese medicine in a clinic in Toronto. And we had a client come in. She had nearly died several times from an allergy to white flowers, a specific white flower and oranges, anaphylactic shock. It was so severe that she was constantly looking out to make sure she didn't run into these products, which were quite, especially the orange, it was everywhere. So she really wanted to get some help to strengthen her immune system. 
She didn't even think about the possibility of her healing the allergy. That didn't even occur at this point because she'd been suffering from it for so many years. She just needed some extra boosting for her overall wellness and her immune system. At the time, I had the director of the school come and ask her several questions, which were really fascinating. We would try to get to the root cause of the allergy. When did it start? What happened in her life? Who were the people in her life? Was she happy with her job? Was she feeling fulfilled? Did she feel that she was living her purpose? So a lot of questions around what was going on for her in that time in history when the allergies first started. And she honestly couldn't remember anything that was really, really important or that would have triggered this allergy. So we started to boost her with acupuncture and herbs and different methods, but we kept asking her. And on one of the sessions, she had an aha moment, a connection. We asked her, do you have any memory of where you first saw the orange oranges or the white flowers around that time? And suddenly, after one of the treatments, a memory came up for her. And she sat up in absolute amazement and said, oh my gosh, I remember, I know exactly where I saw the flowers and the oranges. So this lady, her husband had died. And what made it even more difficult is that he had committed suicide in their home. This lady came home after work, opened the door, walked into her home and saw her husband who had hung himself in the living room and next to the table beside his body was a bowl of oranges and a vase of white flowers. I'm getting shivers just thinking of it because, I mean, our minds are so amazing. Her mind was in so much shock that she's still able to create something to protect herself from this horrific moment that she witnessed and experienced. Her mind created this severe allergy because oranges and white flowers were now associated with death in her subconscious. It's brilliant. Allergies are a, an intelligent response from the mind to protect you. That's what it is. It is a brilliant reaction. It is only meant to protect you. Because when you think about it, there's no reason anyone should be allergic to pollen, to grass, to ragweed, to animals. None of that is a danger to us. So what's actually causing this reaction with people? It's either a toxin or it's your mind trying to protect you from something that's associated with that allergy. Now the work is to discover what that is, what the connection is, right? And as soon as this lady realized the connection with the shock of finding her husband and seeing the white flowers in orange, her allergy cleared up like that. I remember we called her six months later and asked her, how is she doing? Still completely allergy free. A year later, still completely allergy free. It's because her mind realized, ah, this does not represent death. It's not going to kill me. It's not going to harm me. I mistakenly associated this unpleasant experience, this horrific experience with those two items. But actually, I love oranges and white flowers are beautiful and there's nothing wrong with them. And she's been able to eat oranges and have white flowers ever since. I just think that's incredible. I mean, every time I come across and experience stories like this with my clients or with other people and they share their experiences, I'm just amazed at our minds, at the level of intelligence from our spirit, from our heart to protect us, to elevate us, to help us grow. With the arthritis, we talked about physical versus emotional. The emotion is the mindset patterns, right? And for arthritis specifically, 
perfectionism, low self-worth, needing to prove your value, worthiness to be loved. These are the main drivers behind arthritis. And underneath that, there's a nonstop internal anxiety. Most high achievers learn to control that, learn to push it down, learn to project a very different state where their family and friends would never know that they're even feeling these things. But if you start to talk to somebody who has arthritis and joint pain, oftentimes there's an element of this driving it. Of course, there are other elements we discussed as well, accidents, repetitive strain injuries, toxins, but this is also one of the elements that's rarely looked at. And if this is one of the reasons behind the arthritis, the joint pain, then you need to address this as well to have the complete reversal of your symptom, which is possible. I've done it twice. I'm telling you it's possible. Okay, I wanna just mention one more thing before going on, auras. So in the bioresonance scan, we take a look at the auric field. So first, let me back up and explain what do we mean by aura? It creates an electric charge. When we have an emotion of feeling, it creates a magnetic field. The electric charge is measurable. The magnetic field is also measurable. So what the auric field is, is a measurement of your electromagnetic field. And so scientists can measure this. It's not just woo woo. <laughs> it's a real type of energy that is measurable. So I do a snapshot of the aura at the start of a scan to see where there might be some weakness. And then at the end of the scan, when we've energized and debugged. And wherever there's weakness, oftentimes it's due to an old injury that hasn't fully healed, some sort of memory that is locked in the cells in that part of the body, or oftentimes electromagnetic frequencies that are disharmonious. For example, if sleeping in a part of the room where behind your head, there are cables running up and down the room or the wall, that disharmonic EMF is impacting your head all night long, all night long, day after day, week, month, year after year. So when I see something in the auric field in the head area, my first question is, where are you sleeping? Because oftentimes it can be as simple as moving your bed to a different spot. Mm -hmm. Some of the other things that impact our health, stress, negative stress, mindset, mold, parasites, toxins, disharmonic EMFs, as I mentioned. A few main points regarding mold. It is something that acts like bubble gum with the system, which slows down the body. People that live in moist environments have a lot more mold around them and in the air than for those who are living in drier climates. But even those who live in the dry climates, in the shower, in the washing machine, in your uh, shoes, uh, in the ventilation system, the water purifier, all of these areas have mold. Mold is microscopic and you don't tend to see it. So by the time you visually see mold, it's already spread significantly. Now, do not try to wash it with soap and water. Don't try to wash it at all. Because what that does, the moment you touch it, it releases millions of mold spores that you are now inhaling. And you absolutely need to avoid that. What you want to do instead is to use these three methods. They're natural and they're highly effective. You can use a UVC light. It's a very specific wavelength of light that kills germs, bacteria, mold, parasites on contact. So it deactivates the life force, the living essence of it. It breaks down the cellular walls. What's important here is that when you put a UVC light into a room, that you are not in the room, you don't have pets or plants in the room because all living creatures will be affected negatively. The next thing you can use is vinegar that's 20% or higher. This is really effective if you want to put it in a spray bottle and spray it or pour it down a drain or put it into the shower head or put it into 
the washing machine, for example, or your dishwasher, very effective. The third one, hydrogen peroxide using food grade. So it's the highest quality. You have to make sure that you don't inhale it because it's very caustic. It's completely natural and it breaks down into oxygen and water. It's very safe as well. Parasites are everywhere. We all have them. And this might surprise a lot of people, but actually it's totally normal. Parasites don't care if you're a, a dog, a horse, a sheep, a human, a baby, it doesn't matter to them. They're looking for a warm blooded host who's eating something that they can enjoy nourishing themselves with. So it's important to debug yourself at least once a year. I do this once, twice a year, or if I happen to notice some strange symptoms like some bloating or indigestion, then I'll do a scan on myself and I'll debug. It really depends on what country I'm in and where I'm eating and what the situation in my life is. It's really good to do a debugging at least once a year. So not only the pets need to be debugged, we do too. Some of the biggest surprises when people start working with me is that they realize how good it is to be seen and heard. So often we seek help and people don't understand what's happening and they just can't really assist or they're not able to really listen and empathize and let a person be heard in a way that they haven't in a long time. This is so important. I need this too. And this is why I have my amazing team that when I'm off, and I haven't been able to get myself back onto that path, I'll make an appointment. I'll book with that person and say, okay, I, I really need to come and see you. I need a little bit of a tweak here. <laughs> also, what is surprising is how quickly mm -hmm. shifting our mindset can lead to a positive impact in our health. You're intuitive too. Always trust your instinct. So often, I'll hear somebody say, Yvette, I knew it. I knew it. And I didn't do it. And I wish I had. Secretly, I knew it. My gut said yes. Or my gut said no. And then I regret it. Right? So, so important to listen to our intuition. And how wonderful is it to have an amazing group of people to elevate with, to share your successes with, to share your challenges and feel that support. It's fantastic. So what does thriving look like? This definition is different for everyone, but for me, it's having the energy to play with your children, your grandkids, your nephews, enjoy outdoor adventures with family, with friends. It's having a passion for life. So when you wake up, you're excited for your day. You're excited to connect. You're excited to create. It's incredible. Vibrant health is really worth its weight in gold. No matter what your situation, there's always hope and there's always ways to improve your vitality. And yes, we are miracles. We are absolutely miracles. Choose to see your life and everything in it as a miracle, something to appreciate and learn from. And whether you've faced mysterious health issues or are supporting someone who has, remember healing is possible and you do have the power to change your health and your life for the better. I've seen it with myself. I've seen it with many others. You can do it too. Something I, I always think about, especially in the mornings, I have a really strong gratitude and appreciation practice in the mornings and evenings. Even the simple things. I'm so grateful that I can use my hands. I'm so grateful and I appreciate the warmth of a hot bath after being outside in a cold wintry day. How wonderful does that feel? Isn't it wonderful to be able to inhale deeply and feel satiated? Your lungs are working. How wonderful to smell your family's home-cooked meals and have all that beautiful nostalgic memories of love and connection you've shared. So many beautiful things to be appreciative. And I think this is such a big help to keep tuning our minds to that. So we keep saying to ourselves in the universe, more of this, more of this. Thank you. I want more of this. Yes. And another thing that's really powerful, thank your body. Place your hands over your heart, taking a few slow breaths, and just silently say to your glands and your organs and your bones and every cell, thank you. 
thank you, body, for being so healthy and powerful and strong and resilient. I appreciate you, body. I love you, body. I'm so resilient and perfect and whole. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> Let me know when, because, yeah, I love sessions with you. They affirmed so many things I struggled with, um, meaning allergy for polyester. You were the first one who confirmed that because I couldn't wear that fabric. My body would go nuts and break out and, and doctors didn't believe me. So uh, I would love to come back. Okay, fantastic. I remember that. <laughs> the polyester was one of the top allergies that came up for you. Yeah. 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 I, it, it, like nobody ever believed me that it's possible, but uh, my body till today cannot take it. So only natural fibers. So I would like to come back and even to see you. So let me know when you come and I'd like to see you. Wonderful, Eva. Very happy to do that. Thank you for, for the wonderful yeah, presentation. Yeah, a lot of, lot of, lot of good insights. So yeah, I'm glad you spoke about to it. Ground ourselves and strengthen that auric field and have the mm -hmm. mindset to also keep it strong. Yeah. Yeah, mindset is powerful. I, I'm really glad you spoke about it because we do inherit that. Like we inherit habits from family where we grew up, my, uh, thinking habits, eating habits, and all of that impacts us later. Thank you for bringing this forward. You're very welcome. Yeah, I think it's it's something that's not spoken of very often yet. In epigenetics, they speak a lot of this, but mm -hmm. it hasn't gotten out to the, the general masses yet. So I, I really am passionate about sharing this because it makes such a difference in our lives. Yeah. It does make incredible difference and also surrounding ourselves with beauty, with what makes us happy and positive. I'm, I'm glad you brought it forward. I believe in that and use that too in my life. Yeah. Oh, Eva, your, your practice is amazing. It's, it's fantastic. Thank you. I know you, you focus a lot on this as well. Mm, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, Yvette. Have a beautiful day. You.